to Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, before we introduce our boxers at this time, I'd like to ask you to rise for the singing of our national anthem. In the ring, presenting the colors, we have the color guard from the Nellis Air Force Base. And to lead us, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome outstanding vocalist, Grammy Award-winning recording artist from Murder, Inc. Records, introducing Ashanti. Twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight For the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly steamed and the rock is red, the love of arms bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Thank you very much to Ashanti. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the Thomas and Max Center here in the boxing capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, for the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Don King Productions, Square Ring, and Murad Mohammed's M&M Sports, in association with Caesars Palace and CM Exchange of Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, a special welcome to America's military at sea, and service men and women serving on bases around the world receiving tonight's broadcast courtesy of our promotional team. Well, fans, this bout coming away is sanctioned by the WBA, the President, Hilberto Mendoza, Supervisor, Dr. Calvin Inelsing, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Luther Mack. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside from Johannesburg, South Africa, Stanley Christodoulou. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Dwayne Ford. Also from Las Vegas, Jerry Roth. And our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, we have Jay Nady. All right, fans, here we go with the showdown you've all been waiting for. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Las Vegas, it is time for the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first the challenger on my 
by left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing brown trunks, fighting out of his hometown of Pensacola, Florida. He weighed in at a ready 193 pounds. With a record of 47 wins, only one defeat, he has 38 wins coming by way of knockout tonight. He attempts to join boxing's most elite as he challenges for the heavyweight crown. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former middleweight world champion, the former super middleweight world champion, the current undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world. Here is one of boxing's pound for pound superstars introducing Roy Joe. opponent across the ring ready to fight on my right ladies and gentlemen out of the red corner the defending world champion wearing black trunks with white lettering hailing from Chelsea Massachusetts and representing his homeland and heritage of Savannah Grande Puerto Rico his weight 226 pounds with a record of 38 wins, four losses and one draw. He has 27 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is boxing's first Latino heavyweight champion tonight, making the third defense of his title. Please welcome the defending and determined WBA heavyweight champion of the world, introducing John, the quiet man, Ruiz. Once again, our referee in charge, Jay Nady, now to give instructions. Do you have any questions? Okay. Obey my commands. Your trunks both look good. When I tell you to break, I want you to break. Step up. Let's go to work. We are that about fine. to get an answer to an age-old question. Can two fighters who have frequently been cautious be rubbed together to create sparks? The fight should take place in staccato bursts. Just to make the point again, John Ruiz in his 36 rounds with Evander Holyfield averaged fewer than 40 punches a round. In fact, 37 punches a round. The heavyweight average is 48. He threw only 20 punches a round against the mobile and active Kirk Johnson. Roy Jones does not throw large numbers in punches, although he does tend to throw them in bunches. Ruiz goes to the body to start out and drives Jones into the ropes. This night, the referee is going to be the most important man in the ring other than the fighters. When he say break, these guys have got to step back if Jones is going to get any twice, advantage twice at all. Slow. Bring your punches out. No, you listen to me. Luis they has pounded Jones to the body in two separate flurries against the ropes. Now they go to the center of the ring, and Roy Jones, who uses the jab sparingly most of the time, begins to jab Ruiz. Let him out. Let him out. And Ruiz pulls in. Roy Jones like to get in there and land his best shot early so he can make the other guy cautious. Jones Gets the, lands an uppercut. He's not like Bob Foster who wanted to knock out. He's a guy who want to hurt you, make you respect him, and put on the show. Luis driving forward. Jones whacking him with a left hook. Right hand over the top by Jones. Already Jay Nady has been very active. Roy will catch him coming in, but he's not your pure counterpuncher, Roy Jones Jr. Jones going to the body. He believes that John Ruiz does not take body punches well. Roy Jones has got an advantage because he's making the big man wait. You don't wait for a little guy. Jones striking like lightning across the top of the right hand. As was the case in Oscar De La Hoya versus Fernando Vargas, you can see that there's a different texture to the fight when they're in the center of the ring than when they're against the ropes. Against the ropes, Ruiz would seem to have the advantages. In the center of the ring, Jones's speed may dominate. 
Roy Jones doesn't like using the jab in his repertoire. He likes to hook you on the side, hook you with the left and the right. He's not interested in it, so if you have an advantage of reach, he doesn't care about that. He doesn't look to jab you anyway. But in this fight, is it a huge weakness in his arsenal if he doesn't use the jab? No, I think it's at his advantage. When you can't outdo someone, do something else. There's Ruiz sticking the jab twice as Jones backs away. When you can see Jones have that much time and when nothing Solid is Solid left hook. And Ruiz comes back with his own left hook and lands the first big right hand. And Jones lands a left in return. And they're fighting in the center of the ring. Big right hand by Jones. That hurt Ruiz. Ruiz that is, right hand hurt. Ruiz's right hand hurt Jones more than Jones's right hand hurt Ruiz, in my judgment. Both men have made statements in round number one. and keep it in there. Hit him here, hit him there. Just keep it pumping. Keep it pumping all the time. Ronnie, when you jab him and he goes... Straight back on me a little bit. Circle off when you're moving out. Okay? Circle out. Don't move straight back. On the head. Let's go. Give it here. All right. You're doing fine. Just circle when you come out. Don't go back straight. You understand? You're doing good. Doing good. Get some water. Here's Ruiz trying to muscle Jones and... That last right hand seemed to rock Jones just a little bit. Jones comes back with a straight lead, quick right hand. Copy box numbers in round one. Fairly typical of both fighters. Ruiz, 9 out of 42. Jones, 11 out of 41. Fairly even rounds. Thanks. What Jones will have to do now is discourage Ruiz from punching low, going to the body. You got to hit him so hard that he'll never duck his head down there again. That's what Jones is trying to do. George, Roy Jones seems to have decided that tonight is a good night to use the jab. I don't think he's into the jab. He's going to sling a few because that's what you do. He's jabbing to the body there. The Ruiz has stopped and given Roy Jones too much time to think and contemplate. You got to make that every round, every second of that round busy for this little man. Gabe Murray said to John Ruiz between rounds, John, don't wait on him in there. Ruiz comes in and for most of the first minute here, waits on Jones. This is the tempo at which Roy Jones loves to fight. Picking his spots in which to flurry and then go back to the waiting game. You see, there's evidence that Roy Jones has hurt Ruiz. He's taking the feints now. <laughs> Body shot by Ruiz. But a left hook by Roy Jones. Upstairs. If you're going to fight a small guy, don't give him time to think. He's quicker than you. Don't. If someone's going to start off with the block, He's going to beat you. Tactically, this is more of a Jones fight than a Ruiz fight. Ruiz is not imposing his size and strength on Jones, which he, which he was supposed to do, insisted he could do, and may yet do, but isn't doing here. In fact, tactically, Jones has just fought a near-perfect two minutes, standing in the center of the ring, beating Ruiz to the punch, nowhere near the ropes, and in no way is Ruiz making his physicality a factor in the fight in this round. He's got to charge in, charge in. If you're going to do some damage to Roy Jones Jr., Ruiz has got to charge him and charge him and bump him and bump him. Quick combination by Jones. Gets in, moves away. His back comes perilously close to the ropes. He circles away. Ruiz wrestling. Jones catching Ruiz on the way in with a kind of hook uppercut. You see, he's with his quickness, he's got the bigger guy afraid to leave with anything. 
This is the kind of round Roy Jones would like to fight all night long. Give me another water bottle up here. Okay, All right. Another water bottle. Give me another water bottle. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Don't let him keep his feet still. Keep him trying to commit himself, okay? Keep him turning. Don't let him lock down on you. You shot, you pot shotting him, but make him turn. Tuck him tight. Jay, you're giving us all warnings. Give them a little. Come on. Just grab him. For Christ's sake. Second down. Let's go. Yeah, Gabby. 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 Jones landing six punches out of 32, but a few of them excellent clean shots. Hard to imagine that John Ruiz can beat Roy Jones throwing 21 punches around. And if you look at the fights, Ruiz no longer have the height advantage. He crouches down as low as Roy Jones is, so Roy can actually jab him now. If you bigger, get tall. That's what Jones is doing, throwing the jab more liberally here than normally, although that's his more frequent approach is to lead with the left hook as he did there. You gotta remember, all it takes is one good punch from Ruiz to turn things around. <laughs> Ruiz trying to tee off on a body shot. Jones moves away. You know what Jones does? He moves behind the referee. When he says break, he steps behind the referee, which is extremely smart. It gives the other guy a long time to catch up with him. John Ruiz told us in our meeting that he wants to go back to what he sees as his lighter heavyweight style. In the early days of his career, he was a mobile boxer puncher type, and he thinks he wants to do some of that tonight. Questionable, it seems to us, as a strategy, his advantages are supposed to be those of a heavyweight. If ever he should have fought, should be fighting like a heavyweight is right now. No time to go back into trying to outbox a boxer and be and be smart. You gotta be rough tonight. Those might be the three best jabs I've ever seen Roy Jones land. And two of the hardest body punches he's ever taken. Those shots around the body by Ruiz, those hurt. There's Jones going to the body, and again, he believes Ruiz is soft in the belly. In fact, when one of our producers said, you mean he has a glass jock? Roy Jones says, yeah, that's exactly it. I'm gonna break his glass jock. He's allowing Jones too much time to rest. This is no more than a light heavyweight fight for him when he can just have that much time not to do anything but just sit there and even initiate the, the contact. You got to jab Roy Jones to his chest, to his body, and wear him down if you lose. Again, they go to the ropes. And again, Ruiz tries to take advantage of the chance to punish Jones to the ribcage. Except for a few moments like that, the first three rounds have been largely a sparring session for Roy Jones. That Ruiz is sitting there watching and waiting for something good to happen. And he gets caught with a right hand right on the button. And Jones hits him with the left hook and ducks the right. The referee won Jones that time, and Jones hadn't done anything. Well, between rounds, Ruiz's manager, Norman Stone, yelled at Jay Nady and said, you're always warning my guy, why don't you warn Jones? And he reacted to it. That's right. Well. Okay, listen to me, listen to me good. This kid ain't coming like he want to now. I want you to go in and steal him, but I need the combination. So the singles and doubles now, let's catch him with the third shot. Let's catch him with the first shot. I want you to try to touch him to the body some, but get low and move out to your, to your right. Okay? Yep. You're moving good. You're moving good. You can't let the cut him off. He's right there for you. When he comes here, the counter punch him. You gotta start throwing one, two trees now. I'm stepping over to the side. One, two trees, step over to the side. You gotta start moving your hands. The two little ones, baby. Two little ones. Right here. Here is Jones, who has never been a jabber in the light heavyweight division, firing jabs, landing them flush. 
Copy box numbers through round three. John Ruiz, 18 out of 90 punches. In other words, he's throwing 30 per round. Jones perfectly content to work at that pace, 27 out of 112. Harold Letterman, how'd you score the first three rounds? Okay, Jim, I got it three to nothing, 30 to 27, Roy Jones Jr. Jim, I, I just like the way he's keeping that fight in the middle of the ring. That's where he wants to fight. He's getting off the good left jabs, getting off the good lead left hooks, and, and you know, just beating John Ruiz to the punch. So far, I think it's a Roy Jones Jr. fight based on clean punching and definitely ring generalship. I scored the first round even and the other two for Jones. I've been in the ring with those smaller guys and you just cannot be in the middle of the ring with them. You got to keep them up against the rope and do what Ruiz is doing now. You can't afford to let them go back to the middle of the ring where they outdo everything. They're quicker. There's a solid right cross by Jones. Ruiz takes it very well. When they were pinned against the ropes in the corner, Ruiz hit Jones on both hips. What was that about, George? Well, you take the man's legs away, he can't do all the things he want to do. But Jones is accustomed to being hit down there, and he's got a good cup. Never have you seen his cup so high above his trunks. Blood trickling from the left nostril of John Ruiz after the solid right hand by Jones about 30 seconds ago. He's got Ruiz cautious, and that's what you got to get in there and fight him if you Ruiz. You can do this thing if you get the maul in this guy. Ruiz is making a mistake of keep getting caught with shots thinking this guy can't hit. All of a sudden, those little guys will knock your head off. Hard to imagine there's any fighter above 160 pounds whom Roy Jones can't beat to the punch. He is repeatedly beating Ruiz to the punch in the center of the ring. Only because Ruiz doesn't punch until he gets hit. Jones ducks the jab. And Ruiz begins pawing at the blood around his nose. Now Roy Jones is not even moving backwards much. Even while jabbing Ruiz in the face accurately, Jones continues to look at the middle of Ruiz's chest. And he slides away behind the referee again. That's wonderful. Masterful stuff. That's what Angelo Dundee would teach. You're using the referee good. Good jab to the body by Ruiz. And that's a tactic that can he count. must use. He that's must can, use that. that can get him into the fight and get him in the fight good. So far, it's been Jones who's jabbing to the body. Now Ruiz gets in a good one. Ooh! He's Ruiz is hurt. hurt. He stunned him with that. Ruiz walked into a right hand, and it shook him. And now Jones looks to do it again. Just missed. John Ruiz has tasted Jones's power. What are you doing waiting? You all right? Huh? Get him on, son. Get him on, son. The fuck you waiting on this kid for? He's coming out, Johnny. He's coming out. I'll finish it, huh? This is right. You gotta get on him. You better get out. Get on him. Don't wait. Keep him back there. You got him, so you're doing the right thing now. Just keep it like that, okay? All right? Yep. Just keep doing what you're doing. Watch Jones's punch as he hits him with a clean right hand, a little high, stunned Ruiz momentarily. Another that's look all, at it. That's all you want to do if you're the smaller guy. Yeah. Stun the big man, make him wait. So far, this fight has lit up to the odds, which reflected the belief that it would be an exceptional smaller man against a rugged journeyman. Now, Jay Nady stops the action, and he wants Vaseline taken off of Roy Jones' face. Alton Merkinson does the honors. Power shots in four. Jones, eight out of 18. Ruiz, five out of 21. Roy's pretty much out his way, except for those moments when he's been pinned against the ropes and has taken body shots from Ruiz. Ruiz looks a little bit more determined to get inside to him now. We're holding, you know. Roy, you're holding. He can hit you. Lead left hook. Every time Ruiz covers up, Roy Jones slaps him anyway to make him say, take your hands down. Don't cover up. 
One of the reasons Jones likes to lead with the left hook is that the natural motion of the punch takes him to the side as he throws it, so it's hard for somebody to pay him back. He feels like with the jab, he's going straight in, and he's more vulnerable to the, to the counter punch. But here tonight, he's used the jab more liberally than before. This has turned into a typical Roy Jones fight, but Ruiz still got the power. You can't play around with him. Ooh, body shots by Roy Jones. We've twice seen him knock men out with body shots. He starts Virgil Hill with a single shot to the liver. I can still hear the slap of that shot to Virgil Hill's body in my ear. Now here's Ruiz again, pounding against Jones's cup and against his hips to try to take Roy's legs away. He's got to continuously fight like that. He can't let these minutes go by where he's not doing anything. You beat a guy in the body, you got to be right back on him. When the referee says break, get right back on him. Otherwise, he recuperates. <laughs> it looks like Jones is starting to fight more like the big man than Ruiz. Jones busting Ruiz with a left hook. And another right cross. Roy mocking Ruiz in there. This is one time Jones cannot play around. Ruiz landed a right hand. He played with the light heavyweight, but you can't play with the big guys like this. Well, Roy's standing there with his hands below his waist, George. That's good, but don't sit, don't play and laugh and try to get into exchanges. Again, whacking Ruiz with the left hook. Ruiz just a little short with that right hand. You see, before Ruiz can get started, you're down to 10 seconds. You can't get it that way. Another good round for Roy Jones's boxing side. Seated at ringside, the heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. Waiting to see if John Ruiz can elevate his own status as a potential challenger by beating Roy Jones. Listen, John. Come on, listen, Joshua and John. Walking down. John, you got to fight. Walking with that jab and banging. This is not funny. Look, the right hand's got to come from here and fast. He sees it coming. He's short. He's right on the head. He sees it coming. Short shot behind. Come on, John. You got to get in this fight, man. You got to get in this fight. All right, everything's going good. Try to work your jab a little more, offset some dens, give him a big shot. But turn. Now take a look at the body punch that Roy Jones slams into the right side. And there's the right hand. Perhaps the best punch that Ruiz has landed. Roy Jones says that he doesn't even like a fly to land on his face. He's very seldom been hit by clean punches with serious power and leverage behind it. Yeah, he was hit by that one. On Harold Letterman's card, Roy Jones has won every round. By CompuBox numbers, he's 55 out of 192. To Ruiz is 35 out of 160. Jones attacking sparingly, conserving his energy, fighting in staccato bursts exactly the way he likes to do it. Ruiz not pressuring him, not making him fight at a pace that might wear him down. Left hook lands for Jones. He's trying to be quicker than the faster man. You can't do it. You got a moat, get up on Roy Jones, get your head on his shoulders and his chest and stay there. You know, you made a great point, George, when you said Ruiz has to go in there and play football. He's not playing football. No, he's, he's playing boxing. basketball. That's right, he's playing basketball. Yeah. And he Jones wins basketball. that game. See? Straight right hand landed for Jones. Ruiz tried to attack. Roy got away. Ruiz has been reluctant to use his size and strength because every time he comes in on Jones, he gets, he has to pay for it, and he doesn't want to pay that price. Stop, stop, let go, let go. You see Roy Jones goes to the middle of the ring. He's got five or six steps before the ropes come. Ruiz shouldn't allow him that. Keep him over there beside those ropes. Again, the trickle of blood from the left nostril of John Ruiz. Jones looks to his right, lands a left hook. 
toying with Ruiz the way he has with a long string of light heavyweight challengers who weren't good enough to test him. We're halfway through this fight. And I heard, you know, my colleague said earlier, this guy's too small. Hey, you can take that away. This, he's fighting like a big man, and he can do this to anyone. I don't care if you're 6'12". Can you be 6'12"? <laughs> <laughs> As Shaq O'Neal, he's around here someplace. <laughs> <laughs> Straight right hand lands plus for Jones. Hot shotting John Ruiz from the outside. Remember, all it takes is one good shot by Ruiz, and things can change. <laughs> this is the way Roy Jones looked fighting Glenn Kelly. This is the way Roy Jones looked fighting Richard Frazier. This is the way Roy Jones looked fighting Richard Hall. Guys who couldn't hold his jock in the light heavyweight division. He's toying with Ruiz the way he did with them. Now here goes John Ruiz looking is, to impose himself into the fight. This is the fight that Ruiz has got to fight. Keep it right there. Don't let it, if the referee breaks you up, go right back to it. Hard body right. shot by Jones. Hard body shot by Ruiz. Another round in which Ruiz mostly waited for Jones to do damage. Get your blood off of it. Warm here, you get the bed. Come on, water, water. Give it here, give it here. You get the bed. Give it here. Give me, give me some deep. Seven times. Don't fight this fight. Yeah. Don't get into that motion, John. He's the best at it. Don't even go there with him. All right? Come on, hands up, jab, walk him down, and wear him on the plane. Just keep putting pressure on him. This has not been a scintillating action fight, but there is drama in watching the smaller man outwit and out hit the bigger guy. At the end, Ruiz does force his way into Jones, but he can't land anything clean. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, 60 to 54, six rounds to nothing, Roy Jones Jr. I gotta tell you something, Jim, he's making his fight look so easy, I don't know. Standing in the middle of the ring, getting off first constantly, now he's landing combinations. It's not only one tremendous left hook, or one tremendous left jab, like you saw there, it's combinations, hitting him with everything. Roy Jones Jr., all the way. You know, you could go back in his career and find whole years with two or three title defenses in which Jones didn't lose a round. So it's not unusual to see a whitewash on the scorecard halfway through. And in general, the, his fights have unfolded much like this one. They now looked Ruiz, a lot like this. Ruiz yeah. has got him close enough to the ropes. Well, he let it get away again. You've got to get him close to the ropes and just start throwing shots. Now he's close again. And he allows him to get that corner again, where it's five steps away. Ruiz's unwillingness to press the action. Now, here he goes. All right, just as I say it, his will arises. But surely what Ruiz is doing in their night tells us that Jones did indeed add some power to his punch. No, 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 no. Thank you. You think so, George? I didn't think, hear that. I think Jones is hitting harder than he did at 175 here. Oh, no doubt about it. He's yeah. feeling the power. But Jones is not a guy who's looking for a knockout. You can forget that. I said earlier, Bob Foster said he couldn't hurt those heavyweights because he was trying to get a knockout. Jones does not look for knockout. He's a 12-round fighter. That's true. Often in the light heavyweight division against outclassed opponents, he's gone 12 rounds. Just because he doesn't like to take chances in the ring. Ruiz gets him into the corner, pound on him, and then let a whole two minutes go, go by without doing the thing. When they stand in the center of the ring and 10 seconds go by with no action, that doesn't help John Ruiz. That helps Roy Jones. Roy Jones was able to land a body shot a moment ago that got Ruiz holding his right hand close to his sides. That, that right hand hurt. Now he's got him against the rope. He's got to go for it.
right-hand lead by Roy Jones. That hurt. Seven rounds. Not much change in the flow. Ruiz trying a little harder in that round to press the action, but he's not there yet. There's the man who beat Larry Holmes in 1985, Michael Spinks. He did it by throwing flurries of punches and bunches and then getting out of the way. Stick and move, baby. It sounds bullshit. He went in. He went in. Come on, Roy. You gotta, Johnny. You gotta fucking do it. You gotta do this. Fucking Roy is doing everything, man. Come on. Norman Stone just called his fighter Roy. Come, come. All right. You didn't deal with that jab. You walk him down. And throw the other punch. Mix your power up in there, okay? I got you. If that, if that one jab don't work, give me a light, strong jab. Jab. We wanted to know whether John Ruiz could ask questions of Jones that his other outclassed opponents couldn't. So far, no. So far, he has been unable to do it. Absolutely right. CompuBox numbers through round seven. Ruiz, 51 out of 226. Jones throwing more, landing more, fighting the fight he wants to fight, as long as this isn't happening. Now Ruiz starts to do what he wants to do. And Jones punches him away. There was a hard right hand by Ruiz. Jones this, seemed to take it pretty well. This is when you find out the light heavyweights and the heavyweights. When you get into the latter rounds, all of that weight starts counting against you. These are the rounds that you find out that heavyweights are different. But wasn't you, George, who pointed out that Billy Kahn would have beaten Joe Lewis if it was a 12 round 12 fight? 12 rounds, he would have beat him. But, Went into the latter round, the 13th round, and that's when he failed. Of course, Lewis knew it was going to be a 15-round fight. That True. probably helped. True. But the, this is when that extra weight and the pushing and shoving and all of that stuff starts working against but a there light has, heavyweight. There really hasn't well, been enough Particularly if of Ruiz it. had been able to do all that early in the fight. But he hasn't done enough of it, it would seem, to have a huge effect on Jones. Well, when you hit these big guys to the body, it starts taking a lot out of you as well. But Jones has managed to move as he likes to do at a measured pace. They trade punches there in the center of the ring. Probably the biggest thing that's happened in this round is that John Ruiz got in a clean right-hand shot against Roy Jones on the ropes, and Jones was able to handle it. Roy Jones does not stand still long enough for Ruiz to land that right hand. He's aiming all night to get that right hand. Now Jones yeah, he's got one against the rope. on his own. And he Ruiz lets has an opportunity, and Jones gets away. Two feet from the rope, Ruiz. Hard right hand by in. Jones. Good quick shot by Jones. Again, put Ruiz on the defensive. What from Ruiz's nose now dripping onto his chest. He looks like something out of an oil painting. But Ruiz has been in this boat before. He knows about the wave that goes along in these rounds, the bleeding and the suffering and the big guys hitting on you. He's not discouraged by that. He, he is He just can't get and, this guy to stand de still. And determined, but he is also very limited. You see, 10 seconds again, and nothing has happened. <laughs> Two-thirds of the way through, and Roy Jones is four rounds away from his conquest of the first heavyweight he's fought. Johnny, we got four more Hard rounds to imagine left. that Jones he's doesn't have a lopsided lead take on take the scorecards based on effective punching. We're going to show you in a minute nice round, some pictures right? of the of the punches that Jones has landed cleanly throughout the fight. Over and over, Harold Letterman tells you it's about effective aggression, clean punching. And that's what Roy Jones has been able to do. And, and not only that, when a fighter does this, it creates a picture in the minds of the judges as well as the fans that one guy is landing the clean punches the other guy is lunging, 
seldom lands something really clean and hurtful. So Roy Jones is surely winning the drama of the fight as well as the fight itself. But in round eight, well, the first time, John Ruiz threw and landed more punches. Ruiz 14 out of 46 in the eighth. Jones 13 out of 34. So if the judges were looking for a round to give to Ruiz, maybe that was it. It's all about Roy Jones being able to keep his legs strong now. Continue doing what he's doing. He get any weaknesses, any weakness at all, then that's when Ruiz can take over. Roy Jones told us that he trained only five out of every seven days during the week because he knew he'd need his legs tonight. He wanted to keep his legs fresh by cutting back on the volume of training. You know, we, we've all celebrated him for his... He's getting a little lazy now. ...for his <laughs> talents and his reflexes, but he is also one of the smartest guys we've seen in the ring. He's getting a little lazy now, Roy Jones, trying to coast a little bit, waiting on those last three rounds. You can't coast with the big guys. You know, forget just the ring, Larry. I always say that Roy Jones is one of the four or five smartest people I've ever met. Look at the amount of money he's made in the ring compared to the amount of risk he's had to take to earn it. That's pretty smart. As he said, y'all must have forgot. Yep. <laughs> like I said, this fight is turning the way Ruiz wanted to now. Jones is not moving around so much. He's standing in one place. Hard body shot by Ruiz. Jones pounds his belly as if to say, give me more. <laughs> Ruiz has not taken one chance. You got to take a chance. Dive in. George. George. That's who John Ruiz is. That's who he's always been. Ever since the Tua fight, he hasn't wanted to take chances. If you're not going to take a chance with Roy Jones Jr., a uh, light heavyweight, you're never going to take a chance. Well, the Tua fight was seven years ago. John Ruiz wants everybody to forget it. Maybe he hasn't. It was, of course, the 19-second knockout that devastated him and his career at that time. All credit to Ruiz for the determination and the grit he's shown in redeveloping and rescuing his career from that point. Absolutely, Jim. You got to understand that David Tua was 50 pounds heavier than Roy Jones. Yep. Yeah. Well, but, but there's no but, need in ho uh, holding back now. Let it go. This is for your title. You earn it. Don't let a guy just tick and pick pack you out of your title. A good shot a right to the shot to the chest by Ruiz. That's maybe the most effective, effective flurry of body punches that John Ruiz has been able to throw in the fight. I gave him that round. He could well have won the last two. We're letting him get away. John, we gotta put this in on second some gear, cards. Baby. We gotta John, put this in second gear. John, he's in a championship gear. round. So get out there and fight this gear, motherfucker. Baby. You gotta make it a fight now. Come in at an angle. Start banging him. Oh, okay, all right. You can't just I'm walk around him, John. You gotta move your hands. Look at this round. You winning him with them slingers, but put them together for me. All right. All right. Way to go. Tight your edge, up. Way to go, bitch. Way to keep him turning like that. You're stepping. Every, just pop him with the jab every time he come to you. When you get a clear shot, go ahead and lay it out. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Harold Letterman, how do you have it through nine? Okay, Jim. Eight rounds to one. 89, 82. Roy Jones Jr. I gave round nine to uh, John Ruiz because, you know, he got inside, pounded the body. Roy sort of just stayed on the outside and popped him with a few jabs. But I got to tell you, this fight, Roy Jones Jr. is keeping it exactly where he wants the fight to be. That's great. When generalship landed a clean, hard, effective shot, just like Larry called it, doing all the punching, it's all Roy Jones. I have it seven, one, and one. Missed again, left hook landed, right hand landed, Jones knocked.
throwing back as Ruiz tries to unload his weapons against him against the ropes. This is Roy Jones' worst habit, backing himself onto the ropes and allowing the opponent to wail away. Oh, but Roy Jones' legs are getting heavy now. This 12 rounds with the big boy makes you tire. His hands are still fast, though. Hands are fast, but legs are heavy. Again, Jones more or less backs himself onto the ropes and gives Ruiz an opportunity. Something Roy has done over and over again against lesser light heavyweight opponents, but which most critics felt he couldn't afford to do here tonight. He's using a jab tonight. Oh, that's a good left hook in there. Now he's starting to lean in and rub against the big guy. This only works for Ruiz. Uh-oh. Gets away with a blow right on the belt line, and it was a good one. Jay Nady didn't even think about calling that a low yeah. blow. I thought it might have been a little low, but didn't apparently do any damage. It was low, but I guess they saw it wasn't intentional. Right hand by Jones, snapped Ruiz. Gives Jones a chance to get back to the center of the ring. Drives Ruiz to get back again with the right hand. Ruiz had some moments in the first minute of this round, but Jones has regained command with the speed of his hands. The left jab tonight. We've never seen Roy Jones go, and go back to the left jab. And now back into the corner and onto the ropes. But only 10 seconds left in the round as Jones gets away. Takes a left hand from Ruiz. Only two rounds to go. Two more rounds. Keep it like that. Give me some water. Every time that Roy Jones goes to the corner, he has to request of water. That's not good. I think he can get by with it for two more rounds, George. Think so? Yeah. Just keep doing it like this. I just motherfucker! Fight him! Go and get him. Go out, fight this fucking guy! Keep your hands up. You think you go to the body, you come up to the head. Come up come to on. the head! Fight him! Come on, Johnny! Fight him! The He's referee. taking your fucking title away from you! The referee sucks! Is all you work for! The ref sucks! Fight him! Fuck the referee! Come on, Stay out there and fight him! The genteel stylings of Norman Stone in the Ruiz corner. Yeah, he's trying to give a transfusion of spirit to Ruiz. They're trying to put a, a personality into John Ruiz that, as you pointed out, Larry, isn't really his. And we have to remember that it was Jones's mild mannered tra trainer. Well, Merkerson, who uh, who belted Stoney himself the other day. Yeah. Knocked him down, sent him to the hospital. You wondered what it would take to perturb Alton Merkerson? We found out. Norman Stone. One at a time with those body shots. Jones has proven he can take it one, take it one at a time. Boy, if Roy Jones is able to go 12 rounds with this guy, we've let the cat out of the bag. He can do anything. <laughs> I got to tell you, George, I never doubted for a second that he could do this. But uh, Ru Ruiz has got that punch. If he can just get that power in there. Better be careful. Land the shots, but don't get into the exchanges. Ruiz has got the power. Well, it's breathtaking when Roy decides to take over and, and becomes the aggressor against Ruiz because you all know the risk. But Roy's just staring it down with his hand speed, his quickness, his skill. This much we know, this much we see. Roy Jones is a great fighter. The guy he's fighting is not.
Remember, it got late into the heavyweight, light heavyweight title. Sugar Ray Robinson was challenging. Joey Maxim. Joey Maxim. And he just couldn't take it anymore. He said it was the lights, but it was because of that extra weight leaning and bumping. Yeah, but that was a night when it was 110 degrees under the under the lights. <laughs> and Robinson is constantly moving. Roy Jones has been an absolute genius of economy in this fight. He hasn't had to use his legs all that much. Ruiz telling Roy Jones to come on, come on. <laughs> Maybe she should tell him to stop it, stop it. Round 11 has been a virtuoso round for Roy Jones, who has toured the ring to all of its corners, stop, taken stop, a little stop. bit of punishment oh, no. against the ropes, and by and large, tattooed John Ruiz whenever he wanted to. Johnny, you gotta fight, man. Back it's the yourself, last round. Back yourself on the corner now. Left ring, stop! No, no, no. You gotta go out and knock him out. No ifs, ands, or buts. You gotta go out and knock this guy out. Give him some water. Give him some water. water. Put some water over his neck. Come on. Johnny, you gotta go out and knock this motherfucker out. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Come on. Let's see what you're all about now. All right? We're gonna see what you're all about. Come on. Come on. Come on. One more round. Fight Get out of our corner. Get out of our corner. Get out of our corner. Fight behind him. I'm gonna fight up your bed on. I'm gonna fight behind him. I'll take both feet. He held the whole fight. Johnny, come on and go get him, Johnny. He held the whole fight. Come on. Keep him out there. Keep him out there. Come on. That's why you're pissed off at Cortez. You said he would have taken a point. Now I know. You gotta keep going. You're in the bag. One of the good things that's happening is here. We'll never, probably never have to see Norman Stone again. That'd be good. That'd be excellent. Ruiz is mad. I mean, he's, he's lost his temper. His corner cussed him out. He's going to fight now. He's going to try. They told him he needs a knockout. Harold, how do you have it? Okay, Jim. I've got a 10 rounds to one. 109, 100, Roy Jones Jr. Jim, I can't see where John Ruiz can win one in a round or two in this fight. All he's doing is plodding forward and getting nailed by lead rights and, and hard left hooks. Or, or, you know, lead left jabs. I mean, Roy's hitting him with everything but the kitchen sink. Easy, Roy Jones Jr. based on clean punching and that, that effective aggressiveness and a ring generalship. What Roy Jones has done so far is to expose a real paper champion. Bingo. John Ruiz's WBA heavyweight belt doesn't mean he's a heavyweight champion. Hey guys, don't, the don't, champion. don't say that. That's not true. Don't go be hypocrites. You have promote the fight, now you tear it down in the we last couple of rounds. It. We didn't promote it as a heavyweight well, championship fight, George. Well, the well, promoters you, did. Well, the promoters, they sold it to us. Now don't take the money away from them. The guy's winning. He's winning big because he's fighting a guy who's beaten Evander Holyfield, everyone else. He beat a Brandon Holyfield once in three fights. Yeah, but don't but take the, the but he's don't a, take the glory from said, Roy Jones. Nobody said he was, he didn't have a title. He just says it's a paper title. Yeah, everyone is a paper title. I'm the head. Stop, stop. Meanwhile, with a minute and a half to go in the fight, the action continues pretty much the way it has up to this point. And John Ruiz, after coming out determined, as George pointed out in this round, hasn't been able to make it translate into anything. Roy Jones has been brilliant. As he knows, because he's smiling about it right now. Ruiz still got a chance. Still has got a chance. No, he doesn't, George. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I applaud you for, for, for wanting to give him the credit that he might make for himself to give him a chance as a... You know, if Roy, Jones, who's win, if Roy Jones win this fight, people are going to start picking on little guys, picking on Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> <laughs> so the predictions of those who thought that Roy Jones couldn't possibly last 12 rounds in the ring with a man who outweighs him by this margin proved empty and false. And the crowd stands and cheers Roy Jones. And he deserves it. He chose his niche. He creatively picked his risk. He excited the boxing world. And he dominated the fight.
Victory celebration in the Jones corner. John Ruiz tentatively held his fist up in the air and then sort of quietly on, walked guys. back Stop into his own in corner. No, no badges or nothing. Again. Now Norman Stone wants to control ring security. In addition to all the other good things he's done. Michael Spinks, 18 years after his conquest of Larry Holmes, watches as another light heavyweight champ appears to have moved up and won a heavyweight title belt. In a round he had to have, John Ruiz landed three out of 43 punches. Roy Jones danced around, landed 9 of 23 on his own, and closed out the near shutout on the Harold Letterman card. Mackie Shillstone, the man who helped condition Spinks for his conquest of Holmes, was here to work with Roy Jones for this fight. And appears once again to be celebrating victory. And the tumult has calmed down in Ruiz's corner. George, we've always known Roy Jones was a great fighter. Is he even better than you thought? That's why I wanted to make sure that we garnish this man with the pride and dignity that he deserved. He stepped up to the bat, and he got a win here tonight. Before the whole world, he showed that being small doesn't mean anything. And I mean, he's the heavyweight champion of the world. No one can take that away from him. Well, if he wins, we still got the judges to see. Oh, I know. <laughs> you never know. George, that would be. <laughs> yeah, I've seen worse. <laughs> Floyd Patterson and oh, well, Jimmy I'm Ellis. The only one I've, I've ever seen that might have been worse was Shannon Briggs getting a decision over you in oh, Atlantic but that, City. But that in a fight in which I think you won 10 rounds. But I don't think that's going to happen here. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, the judges are in agreement. We have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Jerry Roth scores the bout 116 to 112. Dwayne Ford scores the bout 117 to 111. Judge Stanley Christodoulou sees the bout 118 to 110. All three in favor of the winner, joining boxing's elite, the new WBA heavyweight champion of the world, Rose. Jones Jr. Roy Jones loves title belts. He has collected as many or more than any other current fighter, and he's got another belt now, and I got a hunch this is going to be his favorite one. Final copy box numbers, an economical fight, not a lot of punches thrown. Jones throwing more and landing more overall, or actually throwing fewer and landing more as Ruiz overtook him in those last few rounds in the punches thrown category. Jabs. And when have you ever seen Roy Jones throw 220 jabs he wins in a fight? the battle of the jabs. And land 57. And George, I don't want to take credit, but I told you early in the fight, it looks like tonight he's chosen to jab. You're right. But he all stuck great heavyweight it. champions had a good jab. And Larry Merchant stands by with the winner. Thank you very much, Jim. And congratulations, Roy. You went into this fight saying you had doubt. When did that doubt go away? Let me tell you something. First of all, I have to take this time out to thank God for blessing me for giving me this vision so many years ago, actually, and uh, just putting it in me, man, to come out and show what God can do through you if you only believe. That's what took the doubt away. I knew God planned this for me. I've been knowing God had this plan for me. I just didn't know how it would happen, when it would happen, where it would happen, but I knew God had a plan for me. When you went into the ring, the bell rings, you're going out there, you're facing the biggest man you've ever faced. What concerned you at that moment? Uh, just the fact that I don't walk into a big punch early because I've never been hit in 10 ounce gloves by a heavyweight. So my dad very well prepared me for this. Merck did a wonderful job. Mackie Shillstone did a hell of a job. We all came together as a team 
Uh, Pastor Cole in the house. So you're, be easy. so you're saying your first concern was don't get hit by a big sucker punch. Yeah, don't get caught by something while I'm asleep. Hey, soften the prisoners. I'll be able to get y'all to soften the prisoners, baby. I'm coming at y'all, Pensacola. Cole. Yeah. And, and then, Mobile, baby. And then it looked up coast. Like virtually all of your fights. A guy comes to you, yeah, you hit him, and he stops coming. I told you I was jumping on week. I came out there. I knew he thought I was going to run. You didn't see him run. You just saw some more boxing. I didn't run. I box. That's what I do for a living. And like I said, until somebody beat Roy Jones, I'm not changing. That's what I am. That's who I am. I am Roy Jones. MJ, what's up, baby? I'm looking for you to get your fit there. Mobile Revelers, I'm coming back, baby. When did you, how early, I should say, did you feel this fight is mine? Well, I felt it early, but you got to remember, a heavyweight is a big puncher. I took the fight out of him. I think I had him really quit, but I wasn't going to take any stupid chances because that's my career. And that's been a when you say you think you had him quit, that is when he stopped going forward and stopped standing in the middle of the ra I had ring with you, I had you knew you had him. I had him. And the reason he stopped because he was getting popped with some good shots. Hey, quit pushing me, man. What? So, so uh, um, like, yeah, this is my 14th uh, anniversary for, for professional boxing. So, you know, this is a wonderful surprise for me. Pretty good way to celebrate. All right. Throughout your, your boxing career, we've seldom seen you throw your jab with this kind of vehemence and confidence. What was there about this fight that led you to do that? Well, John is front foot heavy, meaning he keeps all his weight on his front foot. So when he does this, it allows me to get my jab off and keep him offset. So what I did was I watched the tape again last night, and I said, you know what? Kirk Johnson could have boxed him with a jab and killed him. Kirk didn't do that. Kirk let up and, start, and kept trying to go to the body. I stayed away from his body. So I boxed him with my jab, and I was like, you know, as long as he front foot hip like that, there's no way he can get out the way of my jab. So i just like to thank everybody at Square Ring, Eminem, of course, Fred Levin, Marab Muhammad, uh, Stanley Levin, Linda Padgett, uh, my whole team. What does this mean to but you God now? does it all. This means that I am pound for pound the baddest mother. You know what? I'm going to touch a That's pair of boxing gloves. I don't care what nobody say. Larry Merchant, anybody, I am the baddest. They can say what they want to say. How many times have a man started as a junior middleweight and became the heavyweight champion of the world? It don't happen. Only Al Lee can shock the world like I did. Huh? Not middleweight. Let's look ahead for a bit. There seems to be two logical opponents out there. Give us your thought. One might be as a heavyweight. One might be Evander Holyfield. You once traveled to Atlanta to check him out to see if he wanted to fight you. He didn't seem to at that time. Now that you have a belt, he might want to. What is your feeling? Well, I mean, I like Evander. Evander's a great fighter. Um, however, for me to beat Evander at this time, his career would not mean anything to me. He's older than I am. He's on his way out. John beat him two times. I beat John. If I beat him, what they're going to say? Nothing. So it's not really a big issue to me. Uh, I didn't want to do this to uh, become a legitimate heavyweight. I just wanted one fight. So I have to see what's on the table for me. If something's beautiful, I mean, un, 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 if they give me, offer me something that's totally undeniable, then maybe, I don't know. Well, I got to see what's happening. I don't know yet. Chris Bird. I did this to make history. Chris Bird, who also, like you, was a middleweight, started a little bigger than you. He's got a title. Your thoughts about fighting him someday for to unify two titles? Chris Bird's a friend of mine. Chris Bird's a great fighter. He's a great southpaw fighter. Um, I take my hat off to him. Um, he's been in the heavyweight division a lot longer than myself. Um, you know, if, if it's good for the public and if it's good money, I mean, why not? But if it's not really big, big money, no, I'm not going to do that because you know, I like Chris. I, I got a lot of admiration. Chris is the one who really, really actually helped inspire me to go ahead and come up and do this. So to interpret what you're saying, you're saying if there is some extraordinary money on the table, you would have to seriously consider at, defending would, your title I, as a heavyweight. I, I honestly have to look at it. I can't say I wouldn't. That's, okay. just, that's only right, you know what I mean? So, you know. Congratulations on a great night, Roy. HBO, Pensacola uh, in the house!